my bride. I am. My name is Taylor Drew. I'm 24 years old, and I'm from Antioch, California. What do you think? I like it. Do you like the skirt? Yeah, I like the skirt. Are you saying yes to the dress? Yes. <laughs> it was the first time that I've ever seen Erin in a dress, and it actually looked great on her. It looks great. Oh, my God. Hello. Number seven, Bridezilla. Tiffany and Jermaine are planning their big day. They plan to enjoy it to the fullest, but will they be able to do so with a tug of war unfolding between the two even before the wedding? I don't think I'm a controlling bride. I think when you pay for something, you should have it your way. There is a difference. I don't think that's controlling. Hey, sweetheart, how are you? Hi, Miss Rod. Jermaine's mom, she's a very nice lady. Oh, that is beautiful. Hey. Oh, my goodness. Got your southern dress. This dress has a little New York in it. That's why I got a big Kool-Aid smile. Oh, my God. Hello. Tiffany is hoping to win over her mother and two mothers-in-law with just one bridal gown. She's choosing something right in the middle to paddle to each side's preferences. Will she able to make her voice be heard? Or will she sacrifice her big day for the happiness of others? Well, what do you know? This girl knows how to make the impossible happen. Or does she? In the run-up to the wedding, Jermaine has the audacity to put in his two cents when it comes to planning it, and Tiffany ain't having none of it and making the mistake of not smiling as she opens the invitations. Number 6. Never Dressed Up Erin is a plus-sized bride-to-be who needs to find a gown suitable for her shrinking stature as she plans to undergo gastric bypass surgery before her wedding. What's more is that she has never put on a dress before, and Camille is the perfect person to be helping this bride. I'm having gastric bypass surgery, and I should lose about 100 to 125 pounds before wedding day. Tell me a little bit about the wedding. We're in the pre-planning process, so okay. we know for sure that we're going to have it at our home. Well, I think what's really difficult Absolutely. is shopping for a girl who's never had a gown on before. Well, we've got a lot of challenges. That's too much lace. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. It was the first time that I've ever seen Erin in a dress, and it actually looked great on her. It looks great. Interestingly, this bride dresses for comfort, and her bridal gown has to follow the same rule. Easier said than done, Erin's rules have left the stylists with very few choices, and the appointment seems to be turning into a nightmare for the poor bride-to-be. Meanwhile, hopeful bride Marissa Reynolds has arrived for her final fitting, and she is met with a nightmare. The gown she had ordered is not in her size and requires some pretty big alterations, which are going to cost her more money. Merchandising director Dorothy has to step in to smooth ruffled feathers. Meanwhile, an exhausted and crying Erin is realizing how blessed she is to have found Jimbo, who only cares about her being happy. Number 5. Conspiring Sister Shawanda Thigpen is a fashionista at heart and what she wants for a wedding gown might just be hard to get within the $3,000 budget Daddy has set out for her. I'm getting married at a botanical garden in Belmont, North Carolina. Shawanda and I, we're both on the same page when it comes to not sparing expense when it comes to fashion. I'm gonna insist that you try it. I will try it on. <laughs> it's gonna have a conniption fit. And we're gonna show Shawanda, you can't judge a book by its price tag. And little sister Maria is very concerned. Their cousin Shaniak is the only voice of sanity in the room. But will she be heard or drowned out by the sisters' ambitions? It's quite clear that this appointment is turning into a battleground with lines drawn. On the one side, you have two sisters hell-bent on getting a beautiful dress, regardless of their father's wishes. And on the other side, you've got Shaniak, who seems to be representing their father's wishes. After putting on and discarding a number of dressings, the last dress seems to have saved the day by being just $800 above budget. But Shanique has overplayed her hand. Number 4. Empty Pockets Amy Sams is the perfect prospective bride who already knows which dress she wants as soon as she stepped into David Emanuel's salon. But there's only one problem, and that is that the dress is definitely out of her budget. Like a trooper, Amy is going to try on other dresses in an effort to find a dress within her bank limits. Unfortunately, Amy's unique situation has put her at a disadvantage because each dress she is trying on is failing to match up to the promises made by the one on the mannequin. My name is Amy Sams. I'm here to find my perfect wedding dress. 
That is massive. So is, it, is budget? I think probably about 1300 1300 okay. okay. We have a beautiful bride who has expensive taste but doesn't have the budget to go with it. What do we do? I don't think I'm seeing a very happy bride at the moment. How are you feeling right now? I feel emotional because I'm in a dress. Wow. Bit more drama this time. Lovely. Bit more wow. Are you saying yes to the dress? Yes. <laughs> and once she has the dress on, it seems as if it was made with her in mind, the way it lovingly wraps around her body. But what to do about budgeting worries? Where's the fairy godmother when you need her? It seems that mother and daughter had miscalculated the situation grievously. Amy has just realized that she will be able to add money to her budget from her own pocket and will be going home with a dress that she has fallen in love with. Don't you love happy endings? Number 3. Disappointed Dads Mark Davison is the dad who never knew that he'd be disappointed in his perfect little daughter, Amy Davidson. But this time, the tattoos on Amy's arms are a reminder of an imperfection he could never associate with his beautiful daughter. My name's Amy Davison, I'm 28 and I'm from Hertfordshire. I'm here today to find my dream wedding dress. I'm a real daddy's girl. I don't think I could do it without him. I really value his opinion. What do we think, Dad? I did like it till I saw the arm. If the father dreams that his daughter's gonna walk in like a fairy tale, princess or Cinderella. If we can't find the right dress to cover those tattoos, there might not even be a wedding. It goes without saying that any virginal white bridal gown will have to come with sleeves to make sure that those dreaded tattoos do not shine through and mark Papa's day. Meanwhile, Carmen DeFalco is an unbashedly indulgent father who would give his daughter the moon if she asked for it. So what's a measly bridal gown? But today, his unconditional love for his daughter is going to be tested like it has never been tested before as he faces the full force of this spoiled princess. Dress number one is in danger of taking down the entire appointment as not only is dad not willing to shell out $20,000 more to bling it out more, but sister Monica doesn't even like the dress. Princess number three is Monica Beats from far away Canada. Canadian reality TV star Monica is the quintessential jeans hippie, but she's aiming to make a style statement through her bridal gown, screaming it out to the world that she is as womanly as it gets. Gruff and tough outdoorsman Tony Beats is the manly version of the quintessential doting father in his own unique way. My name is Monica Beats. I'm from Dawson City, Yukon, way up in Canada. Oh, this is the princess room. Oh, no, get out of it. Oh, no, man. Go to the other oh, place, please. Gold rush. Yep. That's it. Gold rush, isn't it? That's oh, right. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah, my tits yeah, are going to fall out. They're not going to fit in, right? Be nice now. You know. And there's no way his baby girl is going to get disappointed today. Number 2. Spoiled Brat Amanda Aguirre is the typical melodramatic spoiled little princess who expects to get everything served to her on a platter. And this time, she wants a perfect little princess gown handed to her no matter what the cost. My name is Amanda Aguirre and um, I'm 22 years old. Who do you have with you today? Today I brought my mom with me. Well, I've talked to my mom since so she's the one buying the dress. She's hoping to stay around 4000 What do you think? I like it. Do you like the skirt? Yeah, I like the skirt. Pretty, pretty. I love the gathers. What do you think? I like it. I think it's gorgeous. I think it just looks like it's for old people. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord. She has arrived at the salon with her close family in attendance, and it seems right from the get-go that this poor mom is going to get fleeced pretty badly by her loving daughter. And why isn't her style choice for a wedding gown any surprise to us? A princess always dresses in a princess gown, and a princess always gets what she wants. At least, her sister's already known. The first gown is a reenactment of the Cinderella story, and even though it's suiting Amanda's petite figure perfectly, she is not satisfied with the look. Okay, it's okay. It's okay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta stand up to her too and say, you can't have it all. You can't have your cake and eat it too. I just hope you didn't like this one more just because it's more expensive. This dress is a $9,500 dress. It's too much. You're not gonna get it for me. 
I just feel so overwhelmed and tired that I try on all these dresses and it's just really disappointing. Dress number two really makes Amanda look like a Spanish princess come to life, but what this princess wants is languishing on a mannequin. Amanda is intent on putting it and taking it home with her. There's only one person winning this showdown and that's going to be Amanda. Perhaps for the first time in her life, mom has decided to put her foot down and no amount of crying by Amanda is going to change her mind. Or is it? Unfortunately, this bride is going home without a wedding dress. Number 1. Spoiled Sister If you thought only parents spoiled their daughters, take a look at this brother-sister duo. Taylor Drew is the sister who has always been indulged by her brother, Morris Drew, and this time he's going to pay a pretty hefty price for being related to her. Who is my bride? I am. My name is Taylor Drew. I'm 24 years old and I'm from Antioch, California. I am looking for very fitting, a little bit of a train, some embellishments. Oh, oh. oh man, this is awesome. I like the bling here. My brother did say we had some wiggle room. How much is it? Uh, almost 13000 While Maurice is not planning to go even five bucks above his budget, little sister Taylor has some big plans all drawn up and they're all related to his pocket. Even though she wants a figure-hugging gown which doesn't come heavy with fabric, she wants it absolutely weighed down with enough silver sparkle to put stars to shame. The first blow in this battle is a big one, and it has been launched by Taylor as she picks out a gown three times the price of the set budget. Maybe I'll try something else, but I loved it. We have got to find a dress in budget. The reason we were showing you this is this is in budget. Oh, well, hold on there. <laughs> as soon as I put it on, I knew it was for me. It is beautiful. I am a little nervous with price point. It's really nice. I like it. Have we got a touchdown? This is a touchdown. The situation is precarious, forcing Lori to wade through tricky waters. But expecting Big Bro to shell out money for a 13 grand dress might be where baby girl Taylor has bitten off more than she can chew. Now, dress number three is a beauty for which Maurice and Taylor could reach a compromise and what do you know, it's a done deal. That's all we have for you folks. Join us next time.